My name is Chris and we're going to take a look at a couple of different cleaning methods using the Humming Guru Ultrasonic Record Cleaner. Welcome to the Vinyl Attack. Attack! After the review video on the Humming Guru just a couple of weeks back, many of you commented that you'd like to see the methods of cleaning on a record machine that I'd suggested might be most successful. While it stands to reason that showing these cleaning methods is ideal, Putting them in the review video would just end up making it longer and more bloated than necessary. So I've devised a three-stage test that I think shows the effectiveness of my suggested technique, as well as what you might get if that method isn't available to you at the moment, as it does require a surfactant of some kind to break the surface tension on the record. I started off much like I did during the original testing of the Humming Guru by using a vacuum carpet cleaner measured out to an eighth of a teaspoon for consistency. This was pressed fairly firmly into the record and then blowing off the excess. It then occurred to me that this might not be the best idea. Yes, the granular structure was high contrast for greater visibility and fairly consistent in its shape, which is great for testing, but it also seemed to be water soluble. This was a cleaner after all, even if it wasn't meant to be wet by design. So I ditched that idea after one test and decided that using the real world dust and debris from my vacuum cleaner would once again prove to be the most economic and optimal. You'll forgive me if I take a break from testing cleaning methods for a bit. I'm just kind of over handling vacuum dirt for the moment. Scooping up the first batch of dirt and sprinkling it on as evenly as I could around the record, I readied my USB microscope for close-up shots and a camera for an overall view of the record before and after each cleaning and started the lengthy process of testing this machine once again. This time around, the plan was to test the record after one clean in just distilled water and then three cleans, taking photos of both for comparisons and a bit of a benchmark. After that, I would use a soft, synthetic-haired makeup brush to assist the machine by giving the record a bit of a pre-scrub. A single cleaning cycle and three cleaning cycle would follow, once again in distilled water only. For the last test, I'd use the brush to lightly scrub the record once again, but this time I'd be using a surfactant to improve the cleaning action as the solution would then be able to reach much further down in the grooves where the dirt is hardest to clean. The surfactant I've chosen was Turgiclean mixed with 17 drops to a gallon of distilled water. This ratio was roughly in the middle of the recommended 10 to 20 drops. As you're clearly able to see here, an eighth of a teaspoon of dirt is actually quite a bit and not necessarily what you would encounter in your day-to-day -day life. Sure, we probably all picked out a record or two from the used bin that look a bit like this, but it's not what you would see every day. If you can look past that for the moment, however, you'll see that the tests are consistent and we'll also be testing the limits of the Humming Guru's claims of its cleaning power. As with the testing in the review video, a single wash in this machine with no additional pre-clean yielded fairly poor results. While a fair amount of the dirt was removed, which is clear under the microscope, you can also see that, once again, the Humming Guru also seemed to just spread much of the dirt throughout the record just more evenly. Cleaning the record two more times this way for a total of three shows us that this does indeed help matters. There's less overall dirt on the record, but looking at the whole view as well as the microscopic view, I'd say that this doesn't live up to anyone's standard of what a clean record should be. After this test, I dumped the water, gave the basin a good wash to make sure there weren't any leftover contaminants, and filled it up again with more distilled water. Using the aforementioned makeup brush, I gently but thoroughly cleaned the record from inside to out and then back in again, making sure that I hit all the exposed areas, trying to dislodge as much dirt as possible. You could certainly pre-clean your records much more than I did here, but I wanted to keep it reasonable as the entire point of buying an ultrasonic record cleaning machine was to help speed up and streamline the cleaning process. From the overview of the record after just one clean in the machine, you can immediately see an improvement by adding the pre-clean brushing to the regimen. There is certainly still visible dirt on the record, but there's definitely much less of it by way of comparison to the water only clean. Zooming in with a microscope, you will also see that there are fewer spots of dirt, which I found quite encouraging. Giving the record another two washes, but no additional pre-clean, again, I'm trying to let the machine do the vast majority of the work here, the results continue to improve. Considering how dirty this record was at the beginning of the test, adding a simple brush of water to it and a few cleans in the ultrasonic definitely seemed the best way to go. Or was it? As you're all probably aware by now, adding a surfactant to your record cleaning process has become a mainstay for most people who are serious about cleaning their records. Taking another photo before to chart the results for the next test, I once again rinsed and washed the basin, but this time I filled it with a TurgiClean and distilled water mix. For the record, see what I did there? I'm a dad, I have dad jokes. 
This mix is what I use to clean my personal record collection in my degrader. I usually do one to three cleans depending on how dirty the record is and then run a cycle with distilled water alone to rinse the record and Turgitol off. I think this last part is essential and all the Turgitol suppliers I know, including Turgiclean, recommend a rinse as well, so please keep that in mind. I picked up my other brush that I keep just for Turgitol use and gave the record its last pre-clean scrub as close to possible as the one I did prior for consistency. As you can see in these pre-clean photos, the record has a good amount of crap on there, so even with the surfactant, it wasn't going to be an easy task. As before, the improvement in the cleaning was immediately apparent. While I thought the pre-clean and distilled water only did a fair job considering the amount of dirt on the record, the surfactant-infused clean went one step further. There was less dirt overall on the surface of the record as seen in the overhead photo, and zooming way in, you'll also see much less dirt in the grooves. As a matter of fact, in some areas I needed to pay particular attention to the photo to make sure that I was looking at residual dirt and not just the surface damage of this well-used record. In the future I'll probably need to sacrifice a brand new record for testing to avoid this type of confusion. Maybe a Katy Perry record or something that no one will miss. Now, I can practically hear you yelling at me to show the final results of the record being cleaned three times with the Turgitol, so I won't keep you hanging. At the risk of repeating myself, the results are indeed an improvement, but not as big as an improvement as I thought it might be. While there is less dirt visually overall and microscopically, I would have thought the results would have been better considering how well the single clean went with the surfactant. That's not to say that this isn't an improvement. It is. But this very well could be a case of diminishing returns concerning your time. Giving a dirty record a pre-clean scrub with a soft brush, which I'll link below for those of you who might be interested in using the same one I'm using, and a single clean in the surfactant bath might just be all you need. When you factor in that a second clean in only distilled water will rinse off the additional turgitol, it will also take dirt away as well. Outside of still feeling like the Humming Guru is just a bit underpowered, the only real drawback I found here is how much water I needed to use. The Provida Basin isn't very big, nor is the size of the wash tank, so the dirtier the record, the faster you'll need to rinse and refill the basin. Personally, if I were going this route, I'd purchase an additional water basin and mark one for Turgitol and one for water. Not only would this speed up your cleaning process by having the two basins at the ready, but it would also reduce the amount of wasted water and Turgitol. Sure, they're not terribly expensive, but this does add up. The last thing to consider is making sure you don't run the machine too many times in a row without a break. If you look back at my review video, the temperature started to rise above what some may consider a safe level after only five washes right in a row. Getting the water too hot can certainly ruin your party. Outside of that, I hope this clears up any questions that you have about the cleaning power of the Humming Guru. Thank you to all of my patrons on Patreon who helped make these videos possible. Thanks to you for stopping by, and I look forward to next time.